I know he's living in the what men may say. Amen. Yeah. It's Beverly. Lead us in a call to worship, please. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's a great day. Amen. Uh, today, this is from Mark 4, 37 through 40. God's constant in change. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat, so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? And then there's a prayer that goes along with it. Father God, no matter what changes I am facing, I can walk confidently when you are with me. You are prepared for everything. You are still in the storm, and you will not leave me to drown. Amen. 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 I have something just a little bit of a coincidence. Last week and this week, it seems like. Now, Mark and I have not talked all week. But our message seems to be the same for the last two weeks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's the way the Lord works. Thank you, Miss Beverly. Uh -huh. God bless you for what you do. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. we got a great crowd here today, and I'm so glad to see you. have been looking forward to it all week. And it's good to gather in His name. We're going to touch each other. We're going to touch Him. He's going to change our lives before we leave here today. I get excited about that, but I need changing. I need him to make me more like him. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Well, if y'all ready, y'all ready for some church? Amen. Let's get this thing started here in Jesus' name. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Lord. Oh, you're so good. Jesus, you're so good. You've been so good to us. Oh, Lord, we couldn't thank you enough if we started right now. And thank you, Lord. God, just receive our praise, receive glory from our lives, receive glory from our church, Lord. That's why we're here. It's why we exist, to glorify your name in all the earth, Lord. We bless you, praise you, we thank you, God. Let the preaching of the word permeate our heart today, Lord. Let the worship reach out and touch you, Lord Jesus, so that we can just feel the virtue flowing from you, Lord, because you are giving us your righteousness, Lord. You're making us holy, Lord, and we come before your presence with singing, this day, Lord, and we just ask you to uh, bless our personal interactions with each other, Lord, as we reach out and hug each other, love each other, shake hands, and we greet each other in Jesus' name, Lord. Thank you for the family of God. Blessed be your name, Lord Almighty. We thank you. This next hour is yours, Lord Jesus. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Lord, God, let's do some singing, folks. We're already singing one good song. What you got? We're going to coach, baby. We're going to do uh, page 69.
Yeah, uh, the next one is um, 141. 141. I don't know that one. You did that one. Um, I did this one for Chad, hoping he might be here. He may be watching this later on online, so this is his favorite. 121. Church in the Wildwood. Page 121 in the small brown book. I see that. It's one where y'all got to be the line. start talking about prayer requests while I take a little break. <laughs> I'm going to uh, take a break. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Surprise. So I will start us all off with saying, if you've looked at my Facebook page, you saw I was real happy about I got to take my dog to the groomer. Miss <laughs> yeah. um, Jane is doing so much better. Thank y'all so much for your prayers. Um, she still has heart damage. She's on lots of medication. She's in constant monitoring. But they finally, I think, are finding a balance. And um, 
I've been in constant talk with her, and, I, and you know, she thanked y'all profusely for the prayers. I told her the other day, I said, when we were talking, and I said, my poor little dog so shaggy, and I said, I can't find nobody for her because she's got health issues, and she was like, well, if you can give her a bath, then bring her to me and help me. We'll groom her together. So that's what we did. So I was real proud, and it was so good to see her. She looks really good, so thank y'all so much. Anybody have a praise report on that? Yes, ma'am. Um, keep my neighbor John Wells in prayer. They're, they called in the hospice office last week. We visited yesterday, and he's pretty much not staying. You know, it's just a few hours or a few days. <coughs> His daughter's in with him, and we heard him say yesterday in a whisper to them that he loved him. So. Mm -hmm. Pray for him that family. Yes. Do you, do you know if he's? They have a church. I'm just not for sure which one it is. Anybody else? Yes, Miss Glenda. Well, we went to the orthopedic doctor, and it didn't go quite the way that I thought it would. Um, anyway, Misty's surgery is scheduled for the 12th of May. Four foot. Is this? Elaborate a little more than that. Is that? Thank you. I'm gonna get scared. You're scared. And I don't, I don't know if it's gonna happen. No. Oh, yeah. Mom's gonna have her food just in case. You've had surgery before, though, right? Now they're going to undo what they had to do five years ago. They're gonna to have to take the the plate and the four screws out of her toe. But originally he said he thought he could do it at their facility. Then he backtracked and said, No, I never said that. So. Mm -hmm. so now we've got her to sleep again. So. so we're going to the hospital? Yes. Yeah, in the hospital. Yes. What's wrong? St. Mary's. St. Mary's? St. Mary's Hospital is a great place to go, Miss, yeah. because they, are, they all, uh, it's a Catholic hospital, so they do recognize God, and, and they have their prayers going and the encouragements, and so that's good. We will be praying for Missy surgery on May 12th, right? He smiled at me big time while ago when I walked out. I'd never seen him smile that much. That mouth is feeling much better, isn't it? Anybody else have a prayer request? I was telling Jan Malina earlier that I was going down the road the other day and it just overcame me how blessed I am in this world, how good God has been to me. Amen. You know, we are all blessed. We, we have each other, we have our families, we have houses, we have food, we have everything we possibly need. God has been good to us. Yes. 
Yes, Lord. Amen. Glory to God. I love this church. <laughs> we love you too. Seem to be in one accord. Yes, ma'am. That is a blessing. It is. Um, to be in one mind, one accord, and one purpose, and to be in love with Jesus and in love with each other as a family. Mm -hmm. It is a true blessing. And we should never take that for granted. Um, it really is. Anybody? Yes, ma'am. Um, travel prayers from Camille and Dane. They're going to Hawaii tomorrow. Mm -hmm. for a week. <laughs> That's our mom's here. And um, <laughs> our Uncle Roy, it's just amazing. <laughs> they were calling in the family and telling them if you're getting prayer, and all of a sudden now he's smiling and winking at the nurses. <laughs> and he, it, I mean, he still can't talk, he still can't have, he's still got the and all that, but he's alert. Yeah. He's yeah. And that's my problem. It ain't over till the Lord says it, so that's right. That's right. Amen. Yes, ma'am. And we still need to keep um, Terry and Bill's grandson, yeah. Gavin. Yeah, Gavin. Has he started responding? Last I heard they were praying for more response. Um, the nurse said he had. He opened his eyes, but he won't. He he doesn't respond to anybody that's talking to him. Like Gavin, open your eyes. He won't open his eyes. Gavin, move your arm. He won't. He, he's not doing that yet. But um, they, he's got lesions on his brain from the brain. It's like shaking baby syndrome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we just need to pray for all those lesions to, to heal up. And sometimes, you know, we just have to be patient. Let God yeah. do His work. That's right. Yes, Amen. Yes. And I fall short of that a lot of times, daily. Yeah. yeah. But on Facebook, um, Crystal had posted it was prom night, and he didn't get to go, but his girlfriend and several of his other friends. Uh, Came to the hospital in their dresses yeah. and yeah. dressed up before they went to the prom. You mind? You're doing a good job. <laughs> <laughs> okay, y'all. Don't don't ever know when you're gonna get put on the spot around here. <laughs> if everybody, if, if we're all our minds are clear, yes, ma'am. I think we need to pray for the church across the street here. They're going through some real drastic changes. Mm -hmm. With the Baptist church. Yeah. Okay. All righty. So, if anybody feels led to call any of these needs out as we go to the building for prayer, please do. We'll have a moment of uh, silence and, and encouragement for each other in prayer, and then I'll leave it. Thank you, Lord. Bless you, Peter. <coughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I just praise your name, Lord Jesus. I just glory and honor and glorify your name. Lord, I just am eternally grateful this morning, Lord God. We just come before you with hearts of such thankfulness this morning, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Such simple words, O oh Lord, but such heartfelt, deep gratitude. You've saved us. You've delivered us. Yes, sir. You've been our provider. You've been our comfort. You've been our joy. You lead us. You guide us. You bind us together in love. That we are a family a family that hurts when each other hurts, a family that loves each other, a family that reaches out to support each other. God, I don't take this for granted. We, we thank you, Lord God, that you bless this congregation, Lord Jesus, in so, so many ways. Oh, Lord, let us live lives of thankfulness. Let us live lives before you, Lord God, that we don't take things for granted, yes. Lord Jesus. Let us be thankful people. Let us not be like the selfish child that grabs the gift of the Father and runs away expecting 
that there will always be more because we deserve it. Because, Lord, we know that we deserve nothing. Our righteousness is as filthy rags, oh God. But you look down on us and you give us compassion. Lord God, you look down on us and you say, these are my children. These are my children. You sing over us and you dance over us with joy, oh God. And you're proud of us. Even when we fall down and we mess up, you don't turn your eye away and say, I want no more part of you. But you lift us up, you gently correct us, and you draw us back to your bosom where we can find safety, we can find peace, we can find restoration. Oh God, let us never take that for granted. Let us never take that for granted. And oh Lord, we come before you this morning with thankful hearts and we come to ask of you, Lord God, on behalf of the needs of others. Lord God, I lift up John Wells that's in hospice, Lord. Lord, I pray that you would be with him and his family, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray that your will would be done in that situation, Lord God, that you would comfort, guide, strengthen, heal, and, and, and deliver, and set free. And Lord God, move in miraculous ways. And Lord God, when it's his time to leave this life and go to the next life, Lord God, I pray that your peace would be upon them. Yes, sir. And Lord God, I pray for Misty, who's having surgery on May 12th. Would y'all reach yes, around sir. and let's touch Misty? Mm -hmm. Misty, it's normal to feel those kind of emotions, but when we feel those emotions, we can remember that God said he has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love, and of a sound mind. He'll go with us, he'll comfort us, he'll lead us, and he'll protect us. And you're his child. And Lord God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would touch Misty with all comfort, that you would touch her, Lord God, with all peace. Lord God, I come against the spirit of fear and the lies of Satan that would speak in her ear and that would cause her to be afraid. Because, Lord, she's your child. You brought her into this world and you brought her through her life, Lord, and many challenges she has faced and every one she's been triumphant because you are triumphant. And Lord God, I thank you for the blessing that she is to us, Lord Jesus. I thank you for her life and what a joy and what a beacon of love. What an example of God's childlike faith. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord God, I thank you for Misty, Lord Jesus. She's so precious. And Lord, I pray now as she goes into this surgery, Lord, that she would have peace that she would have a rested spirit. Yes. Lord, I pray that she would not focus on anything negative, but that she would see that she's being carried in the arms of Jesus. Yes. And that she would see that your angels go before her, around her, and that your Holy Spirit is upon her, and that the blood of Jesus has already healed her. Amen. Lord, I've got to pray that yes, as she, she goes into that operating room, that every doctor and every nurse that's in there would be sent by you, oh God. Let there not be one person that lays a hand on Misty that is not of your will. If they go in with a bad attitude and they've had a bad day, send them home, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Lord God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you touch that doctor and you give him wisdom. And if he's making a wrong yes. decision or he's needs to correct or change his path is in the middle of this that you would show him. And Lord God, but if this is the path to go, and Lord, then I pray that you'd show him that too. Lord, let every single thing, every single stitch, every single bandage, every single person that touches her, let it be anointed by the power of Jesus yes, and the Lord. blood of Jesus. Yes, Lord. And Lord God, I pray that you'd give her mama peace. And Lord, I pray that from this day forward that Misty would be able to hold her head up and, and say, yes, I'm going through this. I'm yes. going to go through yes. it, and I'm going to get out on the other side. Yes. And Jesus is going through it with me, and I'm going to be okay. Yes. And Lord God, yes. I thank you for it. I praise you for thank it, you. and I glorify your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise you, Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord. Loves me, yes,
take up, take up our offering. Um, Mr. Bobby, would you grab our offering plate for us, please? It's a cool service so far. The Lord's moving in this place, isn't he? Yes. Amen. The Lord is moving. Among these people. Mr. Bobby, right behind you. Anybody need Mr. Bobby to make a stop? We go ahead and turn him around. <laughs> <laughs> Election man. Here we go. All right. Um, you guys are so faithful. I say it every week. I probably sound like a broken record, but I'm going to keep saying it because you're faithful. <laughs> you do what God has asked. I'm bringing your tithes and your offerings, and God just blesses us. I'm looking forward to seeing what he's going to do. I mean, we get, he's got plans for this place and plans for us. We're going to be talking about some things in the next few weeks, I hope. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this offering, God. You've been so good. You've been so good, Lord. And according to your word, Lord, that you will pour out a blessing on those who are obedient. And this one thing, Lord, it's the one thing you said we could test you on, Lord. And these folks are testing you right here, right now, God. Pour out a blessing, we pray, upon everyone who's been faithful for tithes and offerings, Lord. And we pledge to you, Lord, that this won't be used for any ordinary purpose, God. This is kingdom money. This is worship. Lord, we bring the substance of our, our labor, Lord, before you today, the first fruits of our labor, Lord. This is worship. We bring it to your feet, oh Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do in our church. We bless you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and brothers and sisters all around the world as we declare it this morning. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You faithful people of God may be seated in his house today. Y'all ready for some preaching? I've got a sermon that's been on my heart. I almost... I was tempted just a moment ago. Let's just go ahead and sing and pray for the rest of the service, but... I believe this word has, I believe God's got this on my heart. You know, we finished up Hebrews last week, and I'm not ready to start another series just yet. And I like to preach in series. I don't, I don't do much topical preaching. I call myself an expository, verse-by-verse -verse preacher. But there comes a time when we need to address certain topics that are really, really affecting us as people, as Christians in society, when we see things happening around us and we need to be students of the times. Jesus said we won't be able to know the day or the hour when he returns. Only the Father knows. But he said we can be students of the times. We can look at the look at what's going on around us. Just like a sailor would look at the skies. And you remember the old saying, uh, red, sky, red, red skies at night means storms coming. And sailors would interpret the signs and, and amend their actions according to the signs that they saw in the heavens. Jesus compared it to that and said, we can look around us, we can know the season of the times. Now, ever since the days that Jesus ascended back to the Father, people have looked for it. And I believe that's part of our faith is the, uh, the belief in the imminent return of Jesus. I get up every morning and think, this could be the day. This could be the day. You know, it might be 300 years from now. It might be this afternoon. We don't know, but we live our lives just as though he's knocking on the door because it could be any time... And we live our lives as he commanded to us and as he has called us to do and be in this society. We look around our society today, though, and there's some very, very troubling things going on. And what I want to talk to you about today, we're going to go to Matthew chapter 24. If you want to turn there, you, I know you'll recognize this passage. It's one of Jesus' classic sermons, if you will. They're all classics. But this is one that stands out when he was instructing his disciples. They come into Jerusalem and the 
disciples were just in awe of the temple. It was a magnificent structure, one of the most beautiful structures of that day and of that era. And it was lavishly decorated with gold and silver and the finest marble and the finest masonry work. It was just absolutely all inspiring to even be there. And his disciples were just commenting on it. And Jesus said, there's coming a day. And this will be rubble. He said, this is going to be reduced. There's not going to be one stone standing on another. And they went, what? Jesus, we don't understand. Jesus said, there's coming a day. In other words, don't put your faith in this structure. This structure is beautiful. And this structure is, is glorious, but it's going to fall. And we need to keep that same perspective. This world is going to fall. This world is only temporary. We're here for a reason and for a purpose. God has us here as salt and light in this earth. But this world is going down. This world is controlled by Satan at this point in time, that the Satan is the prince of the power of the air, the Bible calls him, and he controls what's going on in society today. And we see a lot of markers that I believe Jesus is calling us today to interpret, to realize that, you know, these are the end times. These are signs that, that things are growing very, very near. I don't want to scare anybody. I grew up during the Cold War in the 70s. Back, I would hear preachers preach about, uh, you know, these computers are just taking over. Now these computers and the Antichrist is coming and he's going to have a computer and <laughs> it was crazy. And I used to go to sleep at night thinking, uh, praying that the communists wouldn't come get us and that, Lord, if, I'm, if, if you come back tonight, please save me if I ain't saved and, and help me, Lord. And I'd be scared to death at night. And uh, that's not what he's called us to. Just like Angie prayed a while ago, God's not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. I get excited when that day is approaching. I do, and you know what? It may cost us something to be a Christian before we leave this earth. It may cost us something. It's costing people all over the world right now. Their lives, their livelihoods, it's costing people throughout the centuries. That's why when we look at it from an American perspective, we think, oh, and you know, the, the tribulation period is coming. Well, the tribulation period is here for a lot of people around the world. Tribulation always follows Christians. Jesus said, these things have I spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation. He guaranteed it. He said, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Don't get depressed about it. Don't get scared about it. Don't lay awake at night and worry about it. I have overcome the world. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Dear friends, that's something to be joyous about. That's something to get excited about. Whatever the devil throws at us, we can defeat. Jesus is Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's read what he said to his disciples. The Olivet Discourse, because he was preaching on the Mount of Olives. That's what we theologians call it. The Olivet Discourse. And I'm only going to read part of it because it's a long chapter. And man, we could spend probably a month <clears throat> preaching just on that particular chapter because he goes through a, a uh, complete view of the end times. Now, the end times for Jesus and his disciples... He was actually prophesying to his disciples and it came to pass in 70 AD when the future emperor of Rome, Titus, who was then a general, ransacked Jerusalem. He came in and that prophecy came absolutely true. There was not one stone left on another where the temple had once stood. It's because the gold had melted in the fires and the, the Roman hordes came through and they would knock those stones down to get the gold out of the stones. So literally there was not one stone standing on another. Now as Jesus goes through this prediction, which would happen within the lifetime of the disciples, some of the disciples would still be alive when this happened. Prophecy most always in the scripture has multiple fulfillments. It's a, a foretelling of things to come, general principles. And Jesus goes back and forth here talking about 70 AD when this would happen and looking towards our times possibly when he will return to this earth and the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our Lord in Christ and he will reign forever. God's enemies will be placed under his feet at that time. But there's going to be some trouble going in the earth before that time comes. So that with all that explanation and all that introduction, let's look at Matthew chapter 24. Go immediately to verse 22 with me, if you will. It's in your bulletin. Jesus is talking about those days of tribulation. He said, if those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. So God's going to cut it short. He's going to, going to stop it before the whole world destroys itself. That's why when you hear about climate change and nuclear power. Man does not have the capability to destroy this. We cannot destroy this planet. God has said that this planet is in his hands. 
It will be reformed in the fervent heat. The Bible tells us at some point in time, God will recreate this earth, but we don't have the capacity to destroy it. Now, we should be good stewards of it. We should take care of it. But this, I know that this planet will not be destroyed by human beings because God says that it will not be. For the, for, but for the sake of the elect, that's us, these days will be shortened. At that time, if anyone says to you, look, here he is, here is the Messiah, or there he is, do not believe it, for false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders, listen to this, to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I've told you ahead of time. So if anyone tells you there he is out in the wilderness, do not go out. Here he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as the lightning that comes from the east is visible even in the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Wherever there is his carcass, there the vultures will gather. Jesus said that the coming of the Son of Man will be visible from the east to the west. It will be a major event. It's not anything secret or clandestine. It's not reserved for a special group of people or some higher ascended beings. It will be a public display of power and majesty that the world has never seen the likes of. Jesus is prophesying towards 70 AD, but he's also looking at our day. I want you to think about what he said, that there, these false messiahs will be able to per, per, perform basically false signs and wonders to deceive, to deceive. Think about deception. Hold that in your mind. I want to read a couple of other scriptures as we uh, continue this thought. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, Paul says about those days, once in tandem with what Jesus is saying here, a continuation, if you will. And with all wicked deception, there's that word again, deception for those who are perishing because they refuse to love the truth and be saved. Therefore, God sends them a strong delusion. This is his enemies. He sends his enemies a strong delusion so that they may believe what is false in order that all may be condemned who did not believe in the truth. Paul is talking about delusions. He's talking about deceptions that will come upon God's enemies, upon godless people who have set their face against him. They'll become delusional. They'll believe lies in the last days. Men will become lovers of themselves. Men will worship the creation rather than the creator, we're told in Romans 1. In chapter 18 of that, uh, verse 18 of chapter 1, Paul says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. There's that deception again, suppression of the truth. We're talking about lies. We're talking about deception, widespread deception of society, of people who are God's enemies that are bringing lies and false messiahs and untruth. And, and does this sound familiar to anyone? When you turn on the TV, you hear it every day. You don't know what to believe sometimes. We don't know what to believe because the news says one thing and the politicians say another and you, know, you just feel like throwing up your hands sometimes, don't you? Because what is truth? What is truth? The essence of our lesson today, and I'm going to be moving along fairly quickly today, Jesus warns us that strong delusions will come, but the Holy Spirit will lead us into all truth. Oh, hallelujah. Why this sermon? Because delusion and deception are the order of our day. Getting worse. Have you noticed an uptick in it? How it's, it's just getting worse and worse every day? Exponentially worse. It's not just creeping up. It's going up like this. I mean, what we are seeing now, we have not seen before. We are savvy, though. We understand these things, right? Oh, we know how to discern truth. We can No, <laughs> we don't. We are capable of being deceived. We are capable of of listening to lies. And unless we listen with discernment, unless we allow the Holy Spirit to give us God's discernment, we too can be susceptible to deception. Um, God called us not to fear. And I've already talked about that. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. When we read the headlines, when we watch the news, we need not be afraid. We see false prophets. We see censorship where truth is being suppressed. Just what he was talking about there, the suppression of truth. Government and politics. Have y'all heard the term the deep state over the past few years? No, 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 none of us even knew the term the deep state before. And when we refer to the deep state, I'm not making a political statement. We're talking about the government acting as an entity to oppress, to, to uh, have censorship against citizens, uh, unelected bureaucrats that reside in Washington, and they uh, suppress the truth. They suppress the truth to get their way into for political advantage. 
There's a war in sex and gender today. We know this. Rules are being rewritten. God's word is being ignored. Science is being ignored in a culture that claims to worship science and scientific data. It is completely ignored in the areas of sex and gender. Science and research itself, protocols are out the window. We found that out through the pandemic when anything that was unpopular, anything that came against the party line was suppressed. Suppressed. The, the lies and the deception were the order of the day. And today we see apostate religious leaders who wish to change the scriptures, who wish to, to say that the scriptures are antiquated, and we find those in our own denomination. We know this. I'm not going to going to uh, mince words about it. We know what's happening in our own denomination. Apostasy. Religious leaders are, are rewriting the scriptures, are ignoring this plain teaching of the scriptures, and it's getting worse. So how can we know the truth? How can we know the truth? Y'all heard anything about artificial intelligence lately? <laughs> That's been, I've been thinking a lot about that. I grew up around in artificial intelligence as an adult. I worked for the University of Georgia and I worked in technology areas and I knew people who had PhDs in, in artificial intelligence who spent their lives studying it. And it's always been out there. It was talking about teaching machines to, to learn languages and that kind of thing. And it's always been a slow and steady pace. But over the past year, past six months, it has taken off like a rocket. It has taken off exponentially. Y'all been watching uh, what's going on with these uh, programs like Chat, uh, Chat GPT, and Open AI. I was watching an interview with Elon Musk just last week, and he said that he and Larry Page, who was the co-founder of Google, used to be good buddies, and he would stay at his house when he was in Palo Alto, California, and they would talk all night sometimes about technology, about electric cars, and all of uh, and rockets, and all that stuff that Elon is involved in. And he said Larry Page hasn't spoken to him in years because they disagreed about the safety of artificial intelligence. Musk said that uh, Larry Page said he was going to create a digital god, a digital god, that Google would become a digital god. And when Elon began to check him on that and say, wait a minute now, wait a minute, Larry Page accused him of being what's called a speciesist. I've never heard that word before in my life. That means that we believe that our species is greater than artificial intelligence. He's saying, oh, the artificial intelligence may be greater than us. Let's, maybe it's our time to, to serve and artificial intelligence can take over. Twisted, warped thinking. God gave this earth to us to be stewards of. And we know from the book of Genesis, we are God's special creation, the highest part of his creation. And he gave us the earth and the fullness thereof. It belongs to God and he's given us stewardship over this earth. Lies and deception from billionaires, multi-billionaires, people who are influential, people who control <laughs> our lives. Some would say that now the internet contains the sum total of human knowledge. And there's some argument there, but I can understand that in a roundabout way. Some would estimate that human knowledge now doubles every 18 months. Every 18 months. We understand that the true sum of the total knowledge which actually surpasses the internet or any measure of human understanding really never changes. Listen to what Isaiah 47 says. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows on it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. It's stronger than the internet. It's stronger than any digital God that is man-created, man-made. The word of our Lord will stand forever. Matthew 24, 35, in this very chapter that we're reading, Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Hebrews 13, 8, we just preached on this last week, I believe. Jesus Christ. The same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the one thing we can count on. The one thing that will not change in a season of change or a time of change that makes us dizzy. It happens so quickly. The Word of God and Jesus Christ will never change. You've heard about driverless cars that are coming, and it'll be here before we know it. Driverless cars. I talked with a friend of Angie's who came to see us a couple of years ago when she brought her husband, and he is working on development of the air taxis, these pilotless drones where we'll fly over traffic jams. And he said, it's happening. It's happening. They were testing it then. He was a coder who had coded a lot of this artificial intelligence. Airless, I mean, uh, pilotless air-driven taxis. I'm sure there'll be an electric school bus with no driver sometime after I retire. <laughs> there'll be trucks that are driverless. AI has now been inserted into every aspect of our lives. It's not all negative. It's not all negative. Don't be afraid of technology because technology is, can be such a blessing. 
But dear friends, I want you to understand in the wrong hands, it causes deception. It causes power imbalances. And God has called us to be as wise as serpents and as gentle as a dove. Have you noticed there's an upsweep in UFO reports too? You hear a lot about that nowadays. Mm -hmm. And our government is starting to release some information that maybe they knew a little bit more than they ever claimed to. Maybe they've been suppressing it. There's that word, the delusion, the deception, the suppression of the truth. Paul called it out in the book of 1 Thessalonians, suppression of the truth. There's lots more information coming out about UFOs. Now, whatever they release, whatever we find out, I don't know what you believe. Maybe some people believe in UFOs. Maybe you've seen one. Anybody ever seen a UFO? I haven't, but it uh, doesn't mean that other people haven't. I've talked to some very credible people who say they have. Lots of new information is coming out, but whatever comes out, is it going to change our worldview? Is it going to change our worldview? Are we still God's special creation? Is Genesis 1-1 still true? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God hovered upon the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And it goes on from there. We are God's special creation. Nothing will ever change that. Hey, think about how our government operates. What if our government told us that extraterrestrials have made contact with us or that they're already living among us? Do we believe it? Well, of course we do. Our government would never lie to us, would they? <laughs> of course we believe it. No. Obviously, we need to look at that with a healthy degree of skepticism. Think about who does this benefit when they release this information? Who does it benefit? I could see them declaring that this represents some sort of new world order. There's a new stage of human development that they've come to teach us, to lead us to peace. A messianic figure, possibly. A messianic figure. Jesus said false messiahs will rise. It could be in the form of UFOs. It could be in the form of artificial intelligence. I'm here today not to speculate, not to scare you, but just say be ready. Be ready for anything because we don't know what the future holds and God is calling us to be as wise as serpents and as gentle as doves. Dear friends, when Jesus returns, it's going to be public and every eye will see him. It will not be a secret. It will not be known to a select few and it will not it won't evolve over a period of time. It will not be some upgrade or some higher consciousness that humanity has been led to. I'm thinking about all these new age philosophies that float around. When Jesus comes, he comes in righteousness to judge and to make war. Revelation 19 says, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. He that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Amen. That's the Jesus that is coming back, the warrior on a white horse with a vesture that looks like it's been dipped in blood because he shed his own blood for us, and he will destroy his enemies. There won't be any evolution. There won't be any higher consciousness. There won't be any alien uh, invasion coming in. Jesus Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. There's an upsweep in false media reporting. We've seen the weaponization of government and the rise of the deep state. You ever heard the term misinformation? Everybody's heard. That's a buzzword of our times. Basically, misinformation is information that I don't agree with. Yeah, that's what when they call it misinformation. That's a buzzword. Just know that just means I don't agree with this. And I'm going to call it misinformation. There's more than meets the eye. Misinformation. Um, the religion. Let me. And I, I wrestled with this, but I'm not going to suppress the truth. There is a new religion, folks. A new religion, and it's called LGBTQIA plus whatever they tack on to the end of that. I love people, and I'm not against any group of people. And we have, dear friends, this has become a new religion. There is a new order that free speech is suppressed. You have to use the correct pronouns to refer to people. And dear friends, it's false. It is false. It is against God's word. It's against science. It's against uh, every thing that we know about biology. But yet we're told over and over that men can become women and women can become men at will, at will. And we're told to celebrate it, that it's a symbol of a rainbow, that it's a symbol of pride. What God has called shameful, they call pride. They're calling it pride. 
How do we respond to these things as Christians? What is truth? How can we know? Friends, we've got to immerse ourselves in the Scripture. We've got to get into the Word of God and we've got to stay in the Word of God. It doesn't mean you have to become a Bible scholar, but you know the Scriptures. You have a copy. Every one of us has multiple copies of the Scriptures. Know what it says. You come to church, and I'll always preach the truth to you. I'll preach the Bible to you. And you check me out in your Bible. And if I ever get out of the Bible, you talk to me or you kick me out because I'm capable of being deceived too. But as God is my witness, I will preach to you the truth of the Scripture. Come to the Bible. Come back to the Bible. Immerse yourselves in Scripture. We need to be on good conversational terms with the Holy Spirit. we got to listen to the Holy Spirit, folks. we got to listen. I've got these... Uh, these uh, points down there at the bottom, the takeaway, you can hear God's voice. You can hear it. And the preacher doesn't have to hear it for you. I'll be glad to share with you. I'll be glad to lead you through the steps, but you're responsible for hearing the Holy Spirit yourself. The Holy Spirit speaks to us as individuals. We know that we can discern God's will. We can know his will. We can know his way. And he will speak to us in that still, small voice. We just got to listen. Immerse ourselves in his word and listen. We got to test everything. Test everything. The Holy Spirit will lead us into all truth. Jesus told us that in um, John chapter 16. He said, I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on His own. He will only speak what He hears, and He will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify Me because it is from Me that He will receive that He will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said that the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. So it's a direct connection to Jesus. The Holy Spirit is God in, in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Co-equal, co-existent, co-powerful. He is God. The Holy Spirit is God. But he leads us to Jesus. He reveals the heart of Jesus to us. We need truth. We need to know the Holy Spirit better than we've ever known him before. When he comes, he will guide us into all truth. I want to start winding down here. I'm talking about deception, talking about things I just heard. I think it was last night. The Long Island medium was in Athens. Did y'all see that? She was at the Classic Center. Deception, lies. Uh, at very best, a con woman. They're at very best, con artists. But at the very worst, they're speaking with demons. Con artists, sorcerers, fortune tellers, card readers, all that stuff. God says, don't touch it. Don't touch it. Ouija boards, anything. Contact with the dead is forbidden in the Scriptures, dear friends. It gives place to the devil. It opens your spirit to the devil's attack. Do not partake in these things. How can we know? How can we know? How can we make sense of anything in this day of great, uh, great lies and deception? Let's continue and talk about these takeaway points. Truth is a person. Truth is Jesus. And he can be known. The truth is not some nebulous concept that changes with the times. Jesus doesn't get with the times. Jesus doesn't roll with the flow. Jesus is truth. Jesus will never change. Get to know the person of truth. Truth can be known. Brother Lawrence was a monk in the 1600s who wrote a classic Christian book, and I've read excerpts from it. I don't think I've read the whole book, called The Practice of His Presence. Practice of his presence. He talked about practicing the presence of Jesus. And I take great comfort in this. Practice his presence. What that means is we don't have him standing before us. I've never seen Jesus. I'm just going to bet you've never seen Jesus. I've heard some people say they've seen him. And that's fine. That's their experience. But it ain't my experience. And I can't live on somebody else's experience. But I get to know him. get to know him a little bit better every day. But it doesn't start big. I mean, it talks every day. We talked about getting up in the morning. You begin to talk to him. You begin to thank him. You begin to realize what he has for your life. You get into the scriptures and you begin to read the promises that he's given you. He's given you warnings about things like we're talking about today. And you begin to praise him again. And you begin to thank him. And you begin to see the blessings around you. And then you ask him to make you a blessing to someone else. And you begin to see the power of God operating in your life. That's what it means by practice his presence. Act and live your life as though he is sitting here arm in arm with you because he is. In the spiritual realm, Jesus is walking with us. He's talking with us every single day of our lives. Practice his presence. Matthew chapter 10, he told his disciples, On my account, you will be brought before governors and kings as witnesses to them and to the Gentiles. 
But when they hand you over, do not worry about how you respond or what you say. In that hour, you will be given what to say. For it will not be you speaking, but the Spirit of our Father who is speaking through you. He's promised to give us words to say. He's going to guide us and lead us even when we come under persecution, when we begin to be ostracized from society because we refuse to bow down to the <laughs> deception, we will be blessed with the words to say. Get conversational with the Holy Spirit. Talk to Him. Ask Him questions. When you see something you don't understand or something comes across your way that doesn't sit well with you, ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, reveal this to me. Help me, Lord. Oh, Lord, hell, Holy Spirit, I need guidance. I need, I need to know the truth. I believe He responds. I know that He responds. I've asked Him before. It may not be immediate. And it certainly has never been an audible voice, but the Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. Give Him time to answer. Because he may have to go through the circumstances of your life. He may have to work on you a little bit to get you where you can hear a little bit better. Get your own biases and your own leanings. Sometimes we don't want to hear the truth. Sometimes the truth is going to hurt a little bit. And we've got up a guard. The Holy Spirit needs to take that guard down. We don't necessarily want to hear it. But he's going to put us in shape to where we will hear the truth. Number seven and final. Take your stand. Stand, stand, stand on the word of God. Rest in the comfort and the power that's given to you by the Holy Spirit and walk in discipleship. Ann said this a few months, weeks ago in Bible study. Discipleship is a lifelong process. It's not a six-week class, a six-week shortcut to discipleship or, or come to church so many times or, or read your Bible through in a year. That's, that's not discipleship. Discipleship is a lifelong process. We're walking with Jesus, dear friends. The, the one who loves us, the one who gave himself for us, the same one who rose from the grave on the third day. The one who sits in heaven is our worship leader today. We walk with him. We talk with him. And we can know the truth. Amen? Amen. In a day of deception and a day of lies, his people will know the truth. Let's pray. Oh, Lord. Lord, this was heavy. Lord, I pray that I wouldn't be misunderstood. God, I pray that we would never adopt a spirit of fear, but God, that we would be vigilant and understand the powerful deception and delusion that this world is under, God. Lord, I pray that you would inform us, God, that we would hear from the Holy Spirit even now. Holy Spirit, have your work. Do your, do your work among us right now. Lord, if I've preached the truth, I pray that it would embed itself deeply in our hearts. God, if I've preached anything that was just my opinion or maybe that wasn't, wasn't uh, what you willed at the time, Lord, I pray that it would just fall away like dross. But Lord, as I have preached the word of God, let it go forth and not return void as you promised in your word. Blessed be your name, Lord. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. 43.
Praise God, 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 praise God. Thank you. We praise you. Thank you for this wonderful group of people assembled together, Lord. I dismiss the saints of God of Statham. In Jesus' name, you're dismissed. Amen. 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 Good. Glory to God. Y'all fellowship. Love each other. Have you seen on the wing? Thank you. 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 I couldn't call it the same in my life. I knew it was something like that.